If you want to get serious about catching fish that are suspended, and when I talk about suspended, I'm talking about anywhere from 30 feet to 300 feet, whether it's in fresh water or salt water. You need to know three important things. First of all, you need to know your equipment. Your equipment includes your reel and what kind of metal jigs you'll be using. We're using, in this particular case, I'm using a one-third ounce Glow Chartreuse Sonic Bait Fish. The third thing you really need to know is your electronic fish locator. Here I'm using a Lowrance HD S7 unit. The left half of the screen shows the bottom 10 feet. The right half shows the entire water column from surface to bottom, which is uh, not quite 72 feet. One of the things that I stress when using your fish finder is to turn off the fish ID. Oftentimes the fish ID will mistake in a school of bait fish for a game fish. Now, usually as far as your spinning reels are concerned, one full 360 degree turn of your handle will usually retrieve about two feet give or take an inch or less. This is important and I'll show you this on the screen. I just had a tap there. Sometimes we're fishing for kokanee and trout. Sometimes the fish will lift the lure and come up and then drop it and uh, you'll get a little fouling. This is the lure that we're using. <clears throat> now you can see the track on that retrieve. But the thing I'm going to press here is first of all follow the tracking on your screen. A good screen will show this. A poor electronic screen won't show this to you. Okay, I'm going to stop it right at 40. See that mark there at 40? Let's go ahead and see if anything's there. Now, if we happen to have a mark at 30, I know that my reel on one full turn retrieves two feet of line. So from 40 to 30, all I need to do is turn that reel five times and I'll bring it up to 30. So we're going to stay at 40 right now because of the one mark there. All right, let's, uh, let's go back to that 30 mark. I'm going to retrieve it five cranks. One, two, three, four, five. Now you can see what's happened. Actually, we're just a little below 30. Most fish look up. So if you're going to err, err on the side of fishing too high than too low. Another tip is that fish will be more active at certain levels in a water column. Uh, if 30 doesn't work, then drop your jig down to the next mark, whether it's a 45 or even all the way down to 60. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it down. Let's say, well, let's drop it down to 60 and see what happens. There goes my jig. Okay, we're stopping it right there. Now one of the reasons why you can see what's happening with the jig on the screen is actually twofold. Number one, the quality of your screen. And number two is the quality of your jig. It doesn't take much effort to move that sonic bait fish. It's really loaded with action. And if you're going to err, err on the side of barely moving it. A lot of game fish want an easy prey. In other words, they're more attracted to a fish that's dying or crippled and can't move very fast. And this is what we're trying to imitate with the sonic bait fish. Now, if you don't know where you are on your screen, basically all you have to do is stop jigging. And these zigzag patterns were turned to a horizontal streak. So that will further identify where you are. We're not really seeing much as far as marks are concerned. And uh, 
but the real purpose of this is to show you how to relate your jig to the screen. Now there we are at 50 again. Let's, uh, let's give it a few cranks up and see what we can do there. You'll also notice that with the Sonic Baitfish, we have two hooks, one on the talent and one on the nose, and also an attachment point on the top of the back. For maximum vibration, attach your snap to the top of the back. Uh, sometimes these fish want something with more vibration. Other times they want it with just flutter. You'll get the flutter by attaching to either the nose or the tail. This is a pretty unique jig in the fact that you can attach the line to any of these three attachment points and you get a totally different action. The sonic baitfish work really well uh, to depths of about 80 feet. Uh, we have sizes from one tenth of an ounce to three quarter of an ounce and that's about it. Now the other, the other jig that I use with great success is the uh, candlefish. As you can see, we're talking about bigger sizes. And uh, when the water gets beyond 80 feet, this is what we use, whether in freshwater or saltwater. Uh, both, both jigs are great for salmon. They're great for just about anything. Today we're fishing for kokanee and for uh, cutthroat and rainbow trout. But I'm just happy to share this, uh, this with you as far as marks on the screen. It's so important. You know, uh, uh, just had one here. Oops. Felt like a kokanee was on, and uh, eh. and he fouled the line. Uh, your your jumping fish like salmon, kokanee, which is landlocked salmon, sometimes will take the lure up and they'll uh, they'll disengage the hook, and sometimes the hook will go over the line. Okay, I hope I've helped you a little bit. Uh, again, know what your reel can do. Know what your jig can do. Practice with your jig in water, you know, off your dock or what have you. Uh, it, again, it doesn't take much to, to activate that jig. The worst mistake you can make is jerking the jig. Again, if you have just a hunk of metal, nondescript metal, then you have to impart some kind of action since the action's not built in but err on the side of finesse jigging. Finesse jigging can catch you a lot of fish. You're out there to attract fish. You're not out there to spook them. And uh, we wish you only the very best on the water and um, appreciate your time watching this short video.